our uh, dear uh, viewers and welcome to a new edition of our program Africa Today. During the past uh, two days, uh, Egypt hosted the first Egypt-EU investment conference that witnessed the signing of deals worth 40 billion U.S. dollars. The conference also saw the signing of the first tranche of the EU's uh, financing package for Egypt's worth 1 billion uh, euros out of a total of 7.4 billion. To shed more light on the investment conference, uh, we are very much delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Mohamed Sadi Ouf, our development expert. Hello, Dr. Ouf, and thank you so much for being our guest. Hello, and Hello, thank sir. you for you. Uh, Dr. Rauf, uh, how do you see the uh, deal signed during the Egypt uh, EU investment conference that took place in Egypt during the past two days? Actually, uh, Egypt hosted a very important uh, conference over uh, two days, mm. uh, and in uh, such conference, uh, 29 agreements uh, and the memorandum of understanding were signed uh, worth about 49 billion uh, euros yes. uh, with companies uh, affiliated with the European Union, in addition to the signing of uh, six agreements mm. uh, and the MOU uh, as well. Uh, at uh, 18.7 billion uh, euros mm. uh, with other uh, alliances uh, and the companies, uh, but uh, its goal is to export to mm. the European Union. And this agreement were signed either at the private sector level or between uh, the private sector and uh, official Egyptian authorities, which achieves uh, major goals. Yes. So, actually, the two-day conference focused mainly on the opportunities for investments in Egypt, especially in the fields of renewable energy, transportation, power generation, digital transformation, and uh, green transition, as well as supporting Egypt's budget and structural economic uh, reform. What's your take on that, and to what extent these would be a breakthrough for the best of the Egyptian uh, economy? Uh, well, uh, these uh, figures reflect the interest of uh, the European Union mm. and the private sector uh, companies as well in uh, various fields and the projects for which mm. agreements yes. uh, and the MOU were signed, including uh, green hydrogen projects as, with, uh, as, as uh, those uh, related to electric cars, mm. uh, infrastructure, sustainable uh, transportation yes. uh, projects, especially monorail and high-speed uh, train yes. uh, that uh, preserve the environment and the climate, uh, communications and information technology as well, uh, and other important uh, and pioneer fields and sectors yes. uh, identified by the Egypt uh, 2030 uh, document. Mm. Uh, these projects also fall within the European Union's goals to support the green economy during uh, the next uh, stage. Yes. Uh, the figures also that were announced uh, will contribute to support the, the Egyptian uh, economy, uh, increasing the volume of uh, foreign uh, investment mm. and providing uh, more job opportunities for young people, which is reflected uh, in the annual uh, growth rates of the Egyptian economy mm. uh, and increase uh, them. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, uh, actually, what about here the message that uh, the whole world was uh, uh, seeing by uh, holding uh, that conference, which is attended by major European uh, economic entities? Uh, uh, well, uh, the most important message is that Egypt is a country of security, mm. safety, and the promising opportunities for all types of uh, investment. Uh, the most important area in which Egypt seeks to lead are green energy, uh, semiconductor development and improving the environment and the climate to achieve uh, Egypt's vision yeah. 2030. Of course. Uh, sir, also, uh, how would that conference help in promoting uh, the uh, FDI, the foreign direct investment opportunities in the country? Um, uh, uh, this conference is a very good opportunity to showcase uh, promising investment opportunities and sustainable environment for investment, especially in the uh, transportation uh, sector, 
uh, renewable uh, energy mm. uh, and all uh, environment uh, projects and all these projects yes. are uh, really promising uh, investment. Mm. Uh, sir, how would that conference be actually a chance for providing greater investment opportunities for the European companies and entities, particularly in uh, the industrial sector? Uh, well, uh, this is in order to, to face the current uh, economic challenge through uh, a serious economic uh, reform program that uh, support the Egyptian economy for decades while taking into account the social dimension at mm. the same time with uh, the state uh, keens to deepen the existing uh, partnership yes. with the European Union by holding this conference to help support uh, cooperation uh, yes. between the private sector on both uh, sides as one of its most important goals. Yes. Also during uh, his uh, inaugural uh, speech before uh, the uh, investment uh, uh, conference, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi talked about uh, the challenges that Egypt is facing due to all the, um, uh, the situation taking place, of course, uh, in the region and worldwide. Uh, to what extent uh, Egypt is sending a message here by hosting that conference uh, amid all the challenges that we are facing uh, worldwide and the whole world is facing as well. Um, uh, right, we, we have many challenges, not mm. uh, only uh, one, but uh, the, uh, Egypt, uh, the Egypt uh, state mm. uh, will overcome all this challenge uh, the, uh, by uh, the help of the uh, European uh, uh, Union and all this uh, agreement that uh, were signed uh, during uh, such conference. Mm. Sir, uh, Egypt had uh, sent a complete file on promoting Egypt's proposed projects for attracting uh, the European investments to the Egyptian embassies in Europe uh, before the conference. So if you would like, uh, can you uh, talk about the significance of that and how that would be uh, actually a positive step for more uh, development and more cooperation uh, between Egypt and the EU as many also, as you have kindly mentioned, memos of understanding were signed uh, during the uh, conference. Um, to clarify uh, this uh, point about the cooperation between Egypt and the uh, European uh, Union, yes. especially I, I want to talk about the, the cooperation between the private sector, which is a key partner mm. and a strong supporter of uh, development uh, projects in yes. all fields, and the government sector uh, alone cannot achieve the state's development goals uh, and ambitions. So we need uh, the cooperation also between the private sector and mm. the uh, 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 governmental uh, sector uh, from one side and with the, in the other side with the European uh, Union. Mm. Uh, what are the most attractive uh, sectors uh, for the European investment since uh, uh, the end of uh, June 2023? So? Um, the most attractive uh, sectors, especially in, in my point of view, is the transportation uh, sector and the renewable uh, energy, uh, especially uh, also the green hydrogen uh, sector, mm. uh, I mean the clean energy in general, we have uh, many opportunities in uh, these uh, fields. Mm. Again, uh, back to uh, uh, the statements by the president, President Sisi, who talked about the challenges here that uh, we are facing and the whole world is facing. How can uh, we conquer these uh, challenges, uh, uh, the regional and international challenges that are affecting uh, the world economy as a whole? Um, we have uh, much challenge. Uh, for the Egypt economy and also all world uh, economy, mm. uh, especially uh, Corona a few years ago and the war between Ukraine yeah. and Russia. But uh, this uh, will face, uh, I mean, no, uh, this uh, face the current economic uh, through a serious economic reform program that supports the Egyptian uh, economy for mm. uh, the last few uh, years, but yeah. uh, we have all confidence uh, mm. in uh, the Egyptian 
government to overcome all uh, these circumstances. Indeed. Dr. Mohammed Asadi Aouf, our development expert, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, precious uh, input. And the spokesman of the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources, uh, Mohammed Ghanim, stated that the ministry's visit to South Sudan is aiming at launching a number of projects implemented by Egypt, including the country first center for rain and the flood forecast. Spokesperson of the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources, Mohammed Ghanim, stated that the minister's visit to South Sudan is aimed at launching a number of projects implemented by Egypt, including the country's first center for rain and flood forecast. Ghanim noted that Egypt has built a similar one in the Democratic Republic of Congo. As for the projects to be launched, he said that 30 kilometers of Bahr el Ghazal River is to be cleaned. The minister has revealed in March that it had begun constructing eight solar powered groundwater pumping stations in South Sudan. The ministry pointed out that 20 of those had been established over the past few years to serve 100,000 South Sudanese citizens. There is an addition to four rainwater harvesting dams. Minister Henny Swalem stated in December 2022 that Egypt has invested 106 million pounds in the water sector in Africa in 2022. The works carried out include the fifth phase of the removal of weeds from Africa's Great Lakes, the second phase of the weed remover in Uganda's Lake Kuyoga and Lake Albert, the completion of seven solar-powered underground water treatment plants in rural areas near the South Sudanese capital of Juba and kick-starting the first phase of constructing rainwater harvesting dams in South Sudan's Khorwara region. There is uh, the addition to developing the Egyptian Sudanese Permanent Technical Authority for Nile Water with regard to the capacity building of the human resources. 228 Arab African professionals received training at the Ministry's Regional Training Center. Further, two training courses were delivered to 38 others from 16 African countries. At least 75, uh, 750,000 people are on the brink of starvation and death in Sudan, where a devastating civil war has left over half of the country's 48 million people in the situation of chronic hunger. At least 750,000 people are on the brink of starvation and death in Sudan, where devastating civil war has left over half the country's 48 million people in a situation of chronic hunger. At least 14 areas across the country are near famine, including some in the capital Khartoum, according to the latest figures from the Integrated Food Security Phase classification, a group of experts from United Nations bodies and major relief agencies that measures hunger and formally declares famine. The dire update appeared to confirm warnings from eight experts that Sudan is hurtling towards a humanitarian disaster on a scale not seen in decades. In a report issued, the group said that 25.6 million Sudanese, or over half the population, were in a food crisis. Of them, 8.5 million are acutely malnourished on scrambling to survive, while 755,000 are in a catastrophe, essentially famine conditions. When the group known as IPC last issued estimates for Sudan in December, the number of people facing catastrophic levels of food insecurity was zero. The latest figures exceeded even those of Gaza, where the group said that 495,000 people were in the same situation. The Cameroonian government announced on Wednesday the adoption of measures to caution the country from the resurgence of COVID-19 cases observed in some European, Middle Eastern, as well as African countries. The Cameroonian government announced that adaptation of measures of caution the country from the resurgence of COVID-19 cases 
observed in some European, Middle Eastern and African countries. According to a statement from the Cameroonian Minister of Health, all travelers arriving from foreign countries shall be required to systemically fill out identification forms at airports. Testing is being reintroduced at airports, but it is currently prioritized for travelers returning from the pilgrims to Mecca. Measures that were previously implemented at the peak of COVID-19 infections are being reinstated, including wearing masks in case of flu-like symptoms, hand hygiene, and regular disinfection of common areas. Finally, the government states that it has the necessary capacity to detect cases and provide free care throughout the territory. The first COVID-19 case was recorded in Cameroon in March 2020. According to the Ministry of Public Health, this pandemic has caused the death of 1,974 people out of the total more than 120,000 infections in Cameroon. Well, uh, without our uh, dear uh, viewers, we come to the end of this edition of our program, Africa Today. You were in the company of myself, my Sirabia, till tomorrow with another crew. It's goodbye, means thanks for watching.